Hi friends, Christy here from makingitinthemountains.com and today I am so excited to show you how simple it is to make your own farmhouse style knit dishcloths. Hello again and welcome back to my channel today. I know it has been ages since I've shared a video here on YouTube. We have had so much going on through the summer. In fact, I shared a post on my blog updating everyone on some really big news we've got in the works right now. Um, so if you want to take a look at that, I'll be sure to leave a link in the description box below for you. But today I am so excited to be sharing a really simple, easy, and nostalgic knitting project with you guys. Now, I don't know about you guys, but growing up my grandma was always knitting up stacks of dishcloths to share with her friends and family. They were everybody's favorite dishcloth because of how well they worked and how easy they were to wash up. I've been meaning to try my hand at knitting up a few of my own for ages now and with the cooler temperatures of fall rolling in right now was the perfect time. Now the pattern I'm going to be sharing with you guys today is actually known as grandmother's favorite dishcloth. It is that quintessential knit dishcloth pattern that everybody knows and loves. It's a really easy to follow pattern and makes for the perfect beginner project if you've never knitted before. I'll do my best to walk you through each of the steps in this video, but you'll definitely need to refer to the pattern and instructions listed out in the description box below as well. And of course you'll be able to find more details and pictures on my blog, which I will also link to in the description box below. So let's get started. So in terms of materials, all you really need is your favorite cotton yarn and a pair of size 4 knitting needles. So to start, you'll need to cast on 4 stitches. Tie a simple slip knot, slide one of your needles into the loop, and then pull it tight around your needle. So a little trick that I've learned along the way to weave in that extra end of yarn so that I don't have to come back with a needle later is to double up my yarn in my right hand and just knit as if it's one piece of yarn even though it's two plies thick. Now you just need to cast on three more stitches. Slide the right needle into the stitch on your left needle. Loop the yarn around the top to create a new stitch and then instead of knitting this like normal you're going to slide that stitch onto your right needle to cast on that stitch. Now remember these stitches are going to be two plies thick but you're going to work them as if they're one. Continue along repeating those steps as you slide your right needle into the stitch on the left, loop the yarn around to create a new stitch, and then slide it onto your left needle until you've got four stitches on your left needle. Now you're simply going to knit those four stitches. Be sure to remember that most of these stitches are probably still two plies thick because you're weaving in that extra end. To knit each stitch, you're going to want to tuck your right needle into the back of the stitch on your left needle, loop the yarn around the top to create a new stitch, pull your right needle back through and then slide it off of your left needle and onto the right. Continue along until you've knitted all four stitches onto your right needle. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the rest of the pattern. Start this row by knitting the first two stitches just as you did the last row. Now notice that when I'm knitting the yarn is behind my right hand needle. 
Now, with these first two stitches knit, I'm going to take that yarn from behind my right hand needle and flip it over the needle to the front. This is what's known as a yarn over and helps to increase the number of stitches with each row. So each time you turn the yarn over to the front of your work, it adds an extra stitch to your project. Now with your yarn in front, you're simply going to knit the next stitch just as you did all of the others. And for the rest of the row, you're simply going to knit each stitch like normal with the yarn in the back all the way to the end of the row, which for this row is just one more stitch. Now you should be left with five stitches on your needle. Move the needle with the stitches to your left hand and take the empty needle in your right and then copy that same pattern down this row. Knitting the first two stitches as normal, flipping the yarn over your needle for the next stitch and then knitting the rest of the stitches as normal all the way to the end of the row. Switch hands again so that the stitches are in your left and the empty needle in your right and repeat the same pattern again down this row. Knitting the first two stitches as normal, flipping the yarn over to the front for the next stitch and then knitting the rest as normal all the way through your row. You're going to repeat the same pattern row after row until you've increased to 44 stitches on your needle. So knit the first two as normal, flip the yarn over to the front for the third stitch, and then knit as normal through the rest of the row until you have 44 stitches on your needle. Okay, so now that we've increased our work to 44 stitches, it is time to work our way back down to zero. To do this, you're going to knit the first stitch in your row just like normal, but when you knit your next stitch, you're actually going to pick up two stitches from your left needle into your right, and then knit them just like normal, looping the yarn around the top to make a new stitch, pulling your right needle through, and sliding both of those stitches off to your left needle. Then you're going to pull your yarn over from the back to the front, and knit your next two stitches together as one again. This is how you decrease your stitches so that you are left with one less stitch at the end of each row. The rest of your row, you're just going to knit like normal all the way through to the end of your row. Then you'll simply repeat that same pattern over and over again until you're left with just five stitches on your needle. So you'll knit your first stitch like normal, your next two stitches you'll knit together into one, then you'll flip your yarn over to the front of your work and knit the next two stitches together again and then just knit through the rest of your row like normal.
Okay, with five stitches left on your needle, you've made it to your second last row of your project. For this row, you're going to knit two stitches like normal, knit the next two stitches together as one, and then knit your last stitch. And now finally, it is time to bind off. So to do this, you're going to knit your first two stitches like normal. Then using the needle in your left hand, you're going to grab the bottom stitch on your right needle, stretch it right over top of that stitch above it, and right off of the top of that needle, making sure to keep the stitch that was above it on your needle. Then you're going to go ahead and knit another stitch from your left needle to your right needle. Use your left needle to scoop up that bottom stitch right up and over the new stitch and off of your needle. And then continue on the same way until you're left with just one stitch at the end. Now slip that last stitch off of your knitting needle completely. Pull a long end of yarn through to make a nice tight knot. Cut off the end from that yarn and pull it through all the way to seal up your project and make it nice and tight. Okay, and the very last step is to thread that leftover yarn into a large needle and weave it through your project. I like to just work mine in and out of the stitches along the edge of my project so that it doesn't mess up that pretty lace pattern that I have going around the outside of my dishcloth. And then once I've weaved about four to five inches of string through my project, I can cut off my end and that's it friends, a beautiful knit dishcloth. There's a reason these dishcloths have been passed down from generation to generation. Not only are they so pretty, but they're so inexpensive and easy to make and great to use to wash up dishes and countertops. They really are such a practical and beautiful addition to any kitchen. Okay friends, thank you so, so much for joining me today. I hope that you are feeling ready to tackle this project yourself, even if you've never knitted before. If you have any questions at all, just leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to walk you through and help as best I can. And be sure to subscribe to my channel for even more farmhouse style DIY, decor, and recipe ideas. Thank you so much for watching.